Welcome. This is video number 370. The Rostos stages of uh, economic growth. Uh, Rostow was an uh, American economist and uh, historian and his uh, complete name was Walt Whitman Rostow. Rostow's stages of economic growth model is one of the most important and uh, historical models of economic growth which uh, postulate that economic growth can occur in five different stages of uh, different length. These stages include the traditional society, the preconditions for takeoff, the takeoff, the drive to maturity and the age of high mass consumption. Rostow's model is one of the more structuralist models of economic growth, particularly uh, in comparison with the backwardness model. Rostow's model is part of the liberal school of economics, which uh, focuses on the efficacy of modern concepts of free trade and the ideas of Adam Smith. It disagrees with the Friedrich's argument which states that economies relying on exports of raw materials may not may get locked in and would not be able to diversify. Regarding this, Rostow's model, model states that economies may need to depend on raw material exports to finance the development of industrial sector which has not yet achieved superior level of the competitiveness in the early stages of take off. Rose, Rostow's model does not disagree with the J.M. Keynes regarding the importance of government control over domestic development which is not generally accepted by some ardent free trade advocates. The basic assumption given by Rostow is that countries want to modernize and grow and the society will agree to the materialistic norms of economic growth. We start with the traditional society. This is the first stage of economic growth. An economy in this stage has a limited production function which attains the minimum level of uh, potential output and uh, here households and uh, other individuals uh, produce for uh, their own consumption. The output level can still be increased as there was often surplus of uh, uncultivated land which can be used for increasing agricultural production. Modern science and technology has yet to be introduced in the traditional society. States and individuals utilize irrigation systems in many instances but most farming is still purely for uh, subsistence. There have been technological innovations but only on ad hoc basis. All of that this can result in increases in output but never beyond an upper limit which cannot be crossed. Trade is predominantly regional and local, largely done through barter system and the monetary system is not well developed. Investment share never exceeds 5% of total economic production. The single greatest factor of production in traditional society is human manual labor. The manufacturing sector and other industries have a tendency to grow but are limited by inadequate scientific knowledge and a backward or highly traditionalist frame of mind which contributes to low labor productivity. In this stage, some regions are entirely self-sufficient. This social structure was generally feudalistic in nature. Under modern conditions, these characteristics have been modified by outside influences, but the least developed regions and societies fit this description quite accurately. The traditional society is heavily dependent on agricultural sector. The second stage of development is the preconditions for takeoff. In the second stage of economic growth, the economy undergoes a process of change for building up of conditions for growth and takeoff. Rostow claim that these changes in society and the economy had to be of fundamental nature in the socio-political structure and production techniques. This pattern was followed in Europe, parts of Asia and uh, the Middle East and Africa. Uh, there is also a second or third pattern in which he said 
that there was no need for change in socio political structure because these economies were not deeply caught up in older traditional social and political structures. The only changes required were in economic and technical dimensions. The nations which followed this pattern were in North America and Oceania, that is, New Zealand and Australia. There are three important dimensions to this transition in the preconditions for takeoff. Firstly, the shift from an agrarian to an industrial or manufacturing society begins. Secondly, trade and other commercial activities of the nation broaden the market's reach not only to neighboring areas but also to far flung regions, creating international markets. Lastly, the surplus attained should not be wasted on the conspicuous consumption of the landowners or the state, but should be spent on the development of industries, infrastructure, and thereby prepare for self sustained growth of the economy later on. Furthermore, agriculture becomes commercialized and mechanized via technological advancement, shifts increasingly towards cash or export oriented crops and there is a growth of agricultural entrepreneurship. The third stage of uh, economic growth and development is the takeoff stage. This stage is characterized by dynamic economic growth. The main feature of this stage is rapid self-sustained growth. Takeoff occurs when sector-led growth becomes common and society is driven more by economic processes than traditions. At this point, the norms of economic growth are uh, well established and uh, growth becomes a nation's second nature and a shared goal. According to Rostow, there are three main requirements for stake off. Number one, the rate of productive investment should rise from approximately 5% to over 10% of national income and net national product. Two, the development of one or more substantial manufacturing sectors with a high rate of growth and number three, the existence or quick emergence of a political, social and institutional framework which exploits the impulses to expansion in the modern sector and potential ex external economy effects of the takeoff. The third stage of economic growth is drive to maturity. After takeoff, there follows a long interval of sustained growth known as the stage of uh, drive to maturity. Rostow defines it as the period when a society has effectively applied the range of modern technology to the bulk of its resources. Now, regularly growing economy drives to extend modern technology over the whole front of its economic activity. Some 10 to 20 percent of the national income is steadily invested, permitting output regularly to outstrip the increase in population. The makeup of the economy changes. Uh, unceasingly as uh, technique improves, new industries accelerate, older industries uh, level off. The last stage of economic growth is the age of high mass consumption, uh, which refers to the period of uh, contemporary comfort afforded by many western nations, wherein consumers concentrate on durable goods and uh, hardly remember the subsistence concerns of previous stages. Rosto uses uh, Burden Brooks dynamics metaphor to describe this change in attitude. In Tom Smith's 19, 1901 novel, uh, Burden Brooks, a family, is uh, chronicled for three generations. The first generation is interested in economic development, the second in its position in society, the third already having money and prestige concerns itself with the arts and music, worrying little about the, those previous earthly concerns. So, to in the age of high mass consumption, a society is able to choose between concentrating on uh, military and uh, security issues, on equality and welfare issues, or on developing great luxuries for its upper class. Each country in this position chooses its own balance between these three goals. There is a desire to develop an egalitarian society, and measures are taken to reach this goal. According to Rostow, a country tries to determine its uniqueness and factors affecting it are its political, geographical and cultural structure and also 
values present in its society. Historically, the United States is said to have reached this stage first followed by other Western European nations and then Japan in the 1950s. Uh, this model has also been criticized. Rosto is, uh, is historical in the sense that the end result is known at the outset and is derived uh, from the historical geography of a developed bureaucratic uh, society. Uh, Rosto is mechanical in, in the sense that the underlying motor of change is not disclosed and therefore the stages become little more than a classificatory system based on the data from the developing countries. His model is based on American and European history and defines the American norm of high mass consumption as integral to the economic development process of all industrialized societies. His model assumes the inevitable adoption of the new liberal trade policies which allow the manufacturing base of a given advanced, uh, advanced polity to be relocated to lower wage regions. Rosso's model does not apply to the Asian and the African countries as events in these countries are not just justified in any stage of this model. The stages are not identifiable properly as the conditions of the take-off and pre-take-off stage are very similar and also overlap. According to Rosto, growth becomes automatic by the time it reaches the maturity stage, but Kuznets asserts that no growth can be automatic, there is always a need of a big push. There appear to be two parallel theories of take-off. One is the take-off and is, is a sectoral and non-linear notion and the other is that it is highly aggregative. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Kindly subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the bell icon so that you can get timely notification about my other videos that uh, I will upload for you.